Hi everyone, this is Nicole Schumann, social media editor for This Built America, and I'm here with Terry Emerson. He's the director of quality assurance at Doral Juvenile Group. Um, he also hands uh, the child restraint systems and, and regulatory affairs, so uh, helping to create the products that make your children safe. And how are you today, Terry? I'm fine, Nicole. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. So first of all, just curious, how long have you been with Doral, and can you explain more about your role? I've been with them quite a while, a uh, little over 37 years. My role as Director of Quality Assurance is I deal with child restraint systems or car seats, as most of us know them, and I deal with uh, retailers, regulators, in this case NHTSA, Transport Canada, um, and I do some litigation work for car seats as well. Great. Now you've been with the company for a long time, 37 years, so I'm sure you've seen many of the changes that have occurred. Um, how has the company changed during your, your tenure, during the time you've been there? It has changed quite a bit. Uh, when I came in 1976, we were very vertically integrated, which means we did many, many operations. Uh, as opposed to now, we still mold uh, or injection mold the plastic shells for car seats. We assemble them, we pack them out, so they're still made here, but we use a lot more components that we don't make. Uh, back in 1976, we had our own cut and sew department, which made the pads or the covers for the car seats. Now those come from um, overseas primarily, but other sources. The print goods, we had our own print shop. Uh, we were able to, we had our own truck lines. Um, our customers were not the big box stores that our primary customers are now. They were hardware stores, specialty stores, mom and pop stores, so that's been a big change. But just the way we do business and, and how much we make here compared to what we used to has changed quite a bit. Do you think that it's changed because of the larger orders needed? Um, I guess with larger orders, wouldn't those, you know, skilled trades of, of you know, the sewing and, and the printing and all that stuff still be needed? Um, why do you think they've uh, gone elsewhere? Uh, it's, it's really the business model. So car seats and juvenile products are a very competitive market. So we had competitors who were doing business um, elsewhere. And when you have high labor content product, you need to find the best way to, to do that that is the most economical. Uh, so the high labor content product or operations moved out first. Actually, first they went to uh, the southern United States, Mexico, and overseas. Uh, so a lot of the, the high labor content operations that were not machine controlled went overseas. Do you think there can be a return to those um, labor you know, skills in the United States um, if companies and you know, people with those skills are, are willing to, to try and work for it? Uh, yes, I think there will. Uh, many things are cyclic. I think this will be one of them. The overseas, and specifically China, they, they're catching up with us. Their workers want better wages, better work environment, better benefits. That costs money. And we're already seeing the, the prices escalate in China, and you're seeing things go elsewhere, and you're seeing some, some things come back to the States. And we have to get better as well, automation, design, technology, you know, will will improve to allow things to come back to the United States. Um, I know you guys, you know, look at the competition from overseas and things. How are the child safety standards here different than in other countries? Um, are products different in child safety standards uh, when they are made in other countries? Uh, Yes, they are different. Some countries are very close and even adopt the U.S. standard. Uh, 
Canada is very close. It's a little different. Europe has a, a different standard. It doesn't allow typically the same product to be sold here as in Europe. There are, there are some exceptions, and I'm talking car seats now, uh, not just general products. Um, a lot of countries don't have a standard at all, um, and, and typically they will allow any child restraint to come in, and, and some companies have just adopted if they meet a, a child seat requirement standard, they can come in. So the world's changing. Okay. So if someone were to buy a car seat made in um, China, how would it be different from one of your car seats? It could be very similar, or it, it may not meet any requirements. Uh, they are in implementation of a car seat standard primarily modeled after the European, uh, but it may not meet any of our regulation or the European regulation. You, you can't be sure until not only is there a regulation, but it's enforced by a regulatory agency and is, and is understood by the retailers and consumers as to what they're getting. If you were to talk to a new parent that was looking for car seats what, and, and safety, what would you tell them to research? Or to look at, and you'll hear this a lot in the in the child restraint industry. So, you need to get a child restraint that that you like that you will use, and it needs to fit your vehicle, and it needs to fit your child. Um, all child restraints do a good job of of helping with safety. If you use a child restraint. Con, you know, consistently, and you install it correctly, and put your child in it. Your child's going to be much, much, much better off than than if you don't use one. Or, um, and if you use it correctly, it's even better. Now, when you're looking, you know, it depends on what your needs are. You can get child restraints uh, for a new parent anywhere from I'm going to say fifty dollars to five hundred dollars. Typically, there's there's not a great deal of difference in safety. Now, there can be for specific crashes, but if you, if you get a child restraint that fits your vehicle, that fits your child, and you use it, you're, you're in good shape. What is, I know Doral is com committed to child safety. That's, that's a big mission for what they deal with. Um, what are some of the investments that Doral has made um, in their own child safety research uh, and in the industry? Well, this facility here in Columbus, Indiana, it's been here since the 1950s. Um, and our parent company, Durrell Industries, has made numerous investments. We have, in 2004, we put in our second crash sled. Um, and those are the simulators you use to crash car seats, you don't really put them in vehicles as a rule. The standard does not require a vehicle. So we put in our second sled. It's state-of-the-art. It helps us in product development, um, in product evaluation, and engineering changes, and continual um, evaluation of the product we're producing. 2010, I'm sorry, in 2004, they also put about $20 million into this facility. We have a million dollar, I'm sorry, million square foot facility and we added a, a warehouse and made a lot of improvements in the facility to modernize it. 2010 we put our third crash test sled in, it's further uh, increasing our capacity. So we, as far as I know, we're the only child restraint manufacturer with uh, three crash sleds and we, we test a lot of car seats every year. Can you um, explain what the um, air protect system is in the car seats? The air protect uh, in itself is a set of air bladders on either side of the head that help protect the child in the event of a side impact crash. Uh, they work because they absorb energy and add time to the crash event. Um, and it gets kind of technical, but in general, if if you if you can add time 
to the crash event, your peak accelerations, your peak forces will be lessened, and therefore your probability of injury will go down. So these air bladders in a side impact, the head will hit the air bladder and um, dissipate the energy. Okay. Have you had um, families come to you with testimonials, um, you know, about you know being in crashes or, you know, how the seats have worked for them? Yes, we've had many. We get many every year. Uh, we share those with our employees, uh, both in management and the ones out in the factory making the making the product. Um, it's and it's a great feeling. We've had some of those people into our facility and and actually visit us and we talk with them and and it, and it's it's you know it's just great. It's a good feeling. Do you have any specific in mind that you can remember? Any examples? We had a family from North Carolina who were in a pretty severe crash. They had a little girl, and uh, I hope I don't get her name wrong. I think it was Ellie. And uh, they came in with Ellie and uh, visited the factory, gave them a tour. We gave them a, uh, a car seat for Ellie with her name uh, embroidered in it. They, uh, they spoke to us. And it was very heartfelt, and uh, actually, it was a tearjerker. I mean, there there were a lot of <laughs> the people that uh, had wet eyes after that encounter. And how old do you think Ellie is now? I think she'd be four thereabouts. Okay, well, that's great. You guys helped save a life. Um. What do you, you know, how did you start out with Doral? What what did you start doing there? Or, you know, what was your background? Well, uh, Doral, this facility is in Columbus, Indiana, town of about 40,000. I grew up here, uh, went to grade school, middle school, high school, um, and then went on to Purdue to major in, in engineering, got my degree, came back to Columbus, put my resume in in several places because I had family and, and friends here. I wasn't ready to leave. I had some, had some offers in Chicago and St. Louis, and I went and uh, did those interviews. But then Costco at the time, prior to it being Durrell, it was called Costco. It's a brand name now. Uh, sent me a notice and wanted to talk to me, and... Uh, I came here and I've been here ever since. I started out in the quality department just like I am now, but I was a, an inspection supervisor. I was over the tube mill area where you make tubing, steel tubing. I was over some of the plastics area and what's called small parts, small parts where you, you blank out steel and form it into the parts you want to you wanna use. And it's just, I've been here ever since in different capacities. I've been in engineering, I've been in manufacturing, and I've been back in quality for 15 years. So if someone would want to get into the safety industry, is engineering definitely the path to go down? Uh, engineering is a good background. It's a technical background, and a lot of what we do and a lot of safety products uh, engineering is required or an understanding of engineering principles. You don't have to be an engineer. You can do it through experience and, and exposure. But engineering gives you a real good background. What are some of the challenges Doral has faced uh, through the time that you've been there? Well, you know, we talked a little bit about the changing business environment, which which was what's tough and, and uh, don't like to see things leave operations leave. Uh, changing regulations is one. So specifically car seats, there's been some big changes in the regulation that affect our car seats. Their design, it, it made some obsolete and we had to design to a new standard. Uh, and you know that can be tough because you don't have a good understanding of it initially and you have to you have to get some experience. So that's certainly been a challenge. What do you think has been the greatest success for Doral since you've been there? For Doral, we've launched some great car seats. Uh, back in the late 90s, we had the first no rethread 
harness, which means you don't have to take the harness out of the shell to adjust it to fit your child. That was a that was a big plus. We've had some convertible seats that we've manufactured that were uh, relatively inexpensive uh, and a great bargain for the consumers, and they perform extremely well. We've sold tens of millions of some of those, and and when you think about how many children are in those and and safer because of those, that's you know that's a great a great feeling. And even with the regulators, we've had some we've had some successes where we've influenced some of the requirements, some of the standards as they move forward. We we are very active in the rulemaking that affects our products. That's great. I mean, you guys have the experience and the knowledge, so that would only uh, help them in the long run making the, the requirements, I would think. That's our thought as well. <laughs> now that photo behind you uh, on the camera, what, what is that there? Uh, and if you're talking about that one, that's a, a shot of a crash sled at our facility. It's it, it's lighted to to show the test bench with a car seat and the test dummy on it. Uh, but that's that's an example of a crash sled. Uh, yeah, it really does look like a sled. That's why I was that's what I thought. But I just wanted to make sure that's what we were looking at. Yeah. So it rolls down a track that's about 80 feet long and then and then crashes. And what are some of the things that they look for to improve on through the crash test? The criteria for a crash test are, first of all, structural integrity. So you want the child restraint to main, remain very much intact. That is how it's attached to the vehicle and how the child is attached to the child restraint. That's the primary purpose is to restrain the child in, in a crash so they're not you know, thrown around in the vehicle to hold them still and to ride down the crash. Um, and then we measure the forces. Um, on the child. So we measure the chest forces, the head forces, and we can measure more than that. Those are the ones that are in the requirement. And in addition, you measure what are called excursion, how far the child moves in this specified crash. So most severe injuries to children in car crashes are head contact. They hit something in the vehicle. So you want to try to restrain the body, restrain the head so it doesn't hit the back of the front seat or the door pillar or a window or other objects in the, in the uh, vehicle. Okay. That's great. I was, yeah, I was wondering how that worked and, and how that impacted design. That makes sense. Um, what is coming up for the future of, of Doral? Um, you know, you've been there for 37 years. What's, what are they going to be doing in the next 30? Well, right now there's a big push for side impact protection, for side impact evaluation. Uh, NHTSA, the regulator of vehicles and, and car seats, are actually considered motor vehicle equipment. So we're very heavily regulated. But up to now, there's only been a frontal crash test as part of the requirement. We're, we petitioned this in 2009. Um, to adopt a side impact methodology, and NHTSA has come out this year with a side impact proposed rule. So we're very active there. We think that will really go a long way to make child restraints better and make the marketing, I'll say, more consistent. You can claim side impact with no requirement at this point um, as a child restraint manufacturer. So that'll help make it a lot more consistent. Uh, Durrell actually has some sister companies around the world, in Europe, uh, specifically the Netherlands, France, UK, that we're going to be working with much more closely in trying to develop child restraints. Not It'd be nice if we could make global child restraints, but that's that's really tough. But using the knowledge we both have to innovate child restraints to make them better. Uh, we'll be looking at not only safety, but ease of use. Uh, is, ease of use is very important for people to understand how to use their child restraints and to use them right. Do you see any other um, child 
child product manufacturing companies um, sprouting up at all in, in the U.S.? Um, I haven't seen a grounds up, and I and it certainly could be. It, it's a tough one to get started in. Uh, to break into the market, uh, product liability can be a real issue, uh, unfortunately. I mean, children do get hurt in car seats, um, but but they could. I'm seeing some some foreign child restraint manufacturers introducing child restraints on a limited basis in the U.S. That's what we're seeing right now. Interesting. Great. Do you have any other thoughts on, on Dural? You've been there for so long. Um, you know, anything else that you'd like to share? Well, you know, it's been a, it's been a very good experience for me. Uh, myself and and almost all of us that are involved with this, you know, really like making child restraints, keeping children safer. Um, you know, it's, it's it's something we love to do. That's great. Well, thank you so much, and thank you so much for creating these products that are helping so many families and so many children. And, um, you know, we just can't wait to see other great things from you guys. Okay, thanks, Nicole. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Good night.